modesty in Islam. We all know that Islam is a complete code of life. Islam teaches that our entire life must be a form of worship to our Lord. This is the true interpretation of the verse in the Holy Quran in which Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn and mankind except for the purpose of worshipping me. To worship Allah in this context does not mean we must sit in the mosque all day prostrating ourselves. Prayer is but a small part of our daily worship. However, to worship Allah every minute of our lives will mean to live our lives according to the way our Lord has commanded so that our every deed is an act of obedience to our Creator and an act of worship. The life of a Muslim is based on the teaching of the Holy Quran and the teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may the peace and blessings of God be upon him. Allah's rules are infallible and good for all times and places but the law of man is subject to error and needs constant revision. What may look good to us may actually be a source of harm and what we love may be the source of our destruction. Allah, whose knowledge encompasses everything, knows precisely what we need in our lives. The best way to live life is to let Allah take control of our lives and everything that He owed us, even if the logic may not be apparent to us, we say to it, Sami'na wa ata'na, we hear and we obey. Allah would not want to turn our lives into a misery. He chooses only the best rules for us and his law when applied has never failed. Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ It may be that you hate something and it is good for you. And it may be that you love something and it is bad for you. Allah knows, God knows, وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And you do not know. Allah, the Almighty God, through the Holy Quran and the teachings of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Him, has stipulated how we must live 24 hours of our life. 24 hours of each day, our dressing, food, behavior, work, manner of talking, manner of walking must reflect the teachings of Islam, the teaching of the Holy Quran, and the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Islam is not a religion practiced only in the mosque. Islam is our life and Islam is our culture. The Quran and the Hadith, the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are effectively the constitution of Islam. Concerning modesty and our association with members of the opposite sex, the Almighty God, the Creator says, قل للمؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم ذلك أزكى لهم إن الله خبير بما يصنعون. Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and be modest. That is pure for them, for Allah is aware of what they do. وقل للمؤمنات and say to the believing women يغضن من أبصارهن. They should lower their gaze. وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ and be modest وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا and not to portray their ornaments only what that which is apparent in this case to lower our gaze means to keep our eyes from anything that may cause us to sin evil thoughts get into our hearts through what we see and what we hear if we could control our gaze and shun any sights that may plague our hearts, temptation would be a lot easier to overcome. As they say, what the eye does not see, the mind does not crave after. In the same verse, Allah orders women to be modest and not to display their ornaments in public, to avoid attracting unnecessary male attention to themselves, which may lead to what Allah has forbidden. The introduction of the veil in Islam it's not in order to punish women, but to protect their rights and dignity as mothers, sisters and daughters. The veil may vary from culture to culture, 
But the most important thing is that the body of a Muslim woman must be decently covered, exposing only the parts that appear naturally, such as the face, hands and the feet. Allah the Almighty, God the Creator, says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhan Nabi, O Prophet, Kulli azwajik, tell your wives, Wabanatik, and your daughters, Wa nisa'il mu'mineen, and the believing women, Wa nisa'il mu'mineen, yudhneen alayhinna min jalabi bihin, that they should cast their outer garments over themselves when out of. Thalika adna an yu'rafna fala yu'dhain. That is most convenient that they should be known as such, should be recognized as Muslims, فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ and they should not be molested. The veil is a symbol of recognition for the Muslim woman. The veil is a badge of honor and distinction. The veil is not a way to restrict the liberty of women. Indeed, we are a people whom Allah has honored with Islam. And if we seek honor from any other source apart from Allah, apart from the Creator God, God will dis disgrace us. We seek honor today through fashion and many other different things, but all we get at the end of the day is frustration because we chase illusions. Our real happiness is in living the way Allah wants us to live. Still on modesty, it is considered immodest for a woman to raise her voice in an unrespectable manner in public. This may also apply to men but more so to women because of their elevated status in society. To further ensure that women are not exposed to any kind of inconveniences and testing situations, Islam teaches that a woman can only undertake a long journey in the company of a close male member of the family. This is not only a protection of the so-called weaker sex, but also a protection of the spiritual good of the stronger sex. We have seen several instances of men trying to help lonely women to carry their luggage but if you're a man no one is going to give you such aid because the motive in most cases is very clear of course both men and women need modesty in their lives but on account of their difference or the differentiation of the sexes in nature a greater amount of privacy is required for women especially in matters of dress it is amazing how the world has misunderstood these gestures of respect and protection and considered them an enslavement of the Muslim woman. Horror stories have been told of how the woman is a second-class citizen in the Islamic countries on account of the veil. Parading women in public with no clothes and exploitation of their respected body for the sake of commercial gain has become the ideal way to emancipate women in the society. The easiest well, I mean, way to sell in today's commercial world is to have a naked picture of a woman on your product, whatever the product may be. And surprisingly, some of our Muslim sisters have fallen for this trick in the name of modernity and civilization. If this is civilization, then every prophet who came before this age of civilization and taught modesty and decent dress must have been uncivilized, God forbid. While there is no doubt that men and women are treated equal in the sight of Allah, in the sight of God the Creator, and will receive equal judgment on the day of resurrection, there is equally no doubt that women are created differently from men, not only physically but also emotionally, and we cannot pretend that every law of nature that applies to men will also apply to women. Both men and women have gifts from Allah, some greater than others. They may seem unequal, but what we must remember is that God has allotted these gifts in accordance with what he sees fit for both sexes. One thing, however, that Allah makes abundantly clear in the Holy Quran is that men are the protectors and maintainers of women and must stand firm in protecting the interests of their women. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Men are the protectors and maintainers of a woman because Allah has given the one more strength than the other and because they support them from their means. A woman may be wealthy, but that does not mean she becomes the so-called independent woman. Support is not just about money and food. The husband remains her protector in so many other aspects of life.